How does Zebra Herd? Welcome to Zebra's Arcade, a series where we try a new game every episode. Today, we're trying Plans vs. Zombies Battle for Neighborville on the Nintendo Switch. Finally, PVZ makes its return on a Nintendo console. It hasn't been on one since Plants vs. Zombies for the DS. It's like 10 years ago now, which is crazy, but here we are with Battle for Neighborville on the Switch. It's been a long time coming. I've been really excited to check this out. So let's go ahead and get started. So here we are at Neighborville and there's uh, the sunflower again. So of course we've seen a lot of this if you've seen the first episode of my Battle for Neighborville series where we played the game for over 250 episodes. Looks like look at the zombie events going on right now at Giddy Park as well, which is pretty cool. You can see the, uh, the hats and everything as the balloons. Very cool. So of course, if you want a more in-depth look at this game, and I mean incredibly in-depth, we get a bunch of stuff in that series, go check that out. But we're just gonna be seeing how the Switch version performs. Um, I think this is the complete edition, they called it. So this is like a unique version of the game. So we're gonna be skipping a lot of the beginning stuff, because like I said, we have a full series on it if you want to see that kind of detail. Um, but as you can see, there's two options. You can explore, or you can battle on offline multiplayer. Um, I might do that in a little bit. For right now, we're just gonna go to Town Center. Either way, it sort of brings you to Town Center, doesn't it? Well, no, no, this brings us to Town Center, okay. So it's gonna do like some opening tutorial stuff, I think. But that's fine. Pretty interesting checking it all off. I have noticed that some like cutscenes and stuff are a little bit choppier, and it looks like we have to go to the story mode right now. Okay, that should be fine. So it looks like all the story mode stuff you still have to unlock probably manually. But as far as I understand with this complete edition, something about like maybe the, uh, any kind of content you could have gotten through ordering the special editions, like some of the, I think there was like some Christmas gear at some point or another. Um, I think that probably comes with this. We'll have to see if like the monthly seasonal content does. But I guess we'll sort of find that out as we get into it. Okay, so here we are at Sundrop Hills. And like I said, I really wanna get into the gameplay and how the game performs. We're currently playing as the pea shooter. Oh man, I missed this game. And honestly, you know, like remember this is the Switch we're playing on right now, which makes everything pretty wild to think about that we're able to uh, just play this on the go. Anywhere we want to, we could be enjoying the Battle for Neighborville story mode, which honestly, I really enjoyed playing through. Had a lot of fun with it. There's lots to explore, lots of cool story elements. And the performance so far isn't too bad. Of course, I'm playing in docked TV mode. Oh boy. I know that there's, of course, you know, 10 characters in each other. Actually, more than 10 now, because, you know, they added characters. And that's something I'm interested in seeing as well. We'll sort of find that out soon enough. Uh, but I just wanna <laughs> run around really quickly. Can I change my character from here? I wonder. Uh, it's not on me, continue. Uh, placing waypoint, okay, here we go. See, so, yeah, I can place waypoints, but I wanted to see if I could respawn. Respawn and choose a different character maybe. I wanna see if they unlock the other characters right off the bat. So they don't. You still have to unlock these through the seasonal content, it seems. Well, it says purchase. Oh, I can do it for coins. That's right, okay. Interesting. Um, anyways, we'll talk to this character. We'll move on with the story mode. And then I definitely want to take a game online and see how that goes. But of course, you know, we're very familiar with all this, so I didn't want to take too much time like actually going into like what the text says because we've seen it all. But yeah, it's a really fun game. If you like to go to War for one and two, you're bound like this one, at least in my opinion. Um, it, it basically has a lot of the same elements. It's just a little bit different in some ways. But I think overall, of course, all three games are a lot of fun. Okay then, so we gotta go over to Old Cool's exclusive club over this way. And this basically starts the story mode for the plants, but there's also another full story mode plan, or, or map for the plants, and also two more for the zombies. So, there's a lot to enjoy. I like the music, we're jamming out. But yeah, for me, the big thing that I'm so happy and excited about is the fact that, uh, we have a PVZ game on on the Switch. Uh, we've been asking for this since God of War 14 and PVZ 2. Like we wanted both of those games on the Switch when uh, the Switch was announced. So it's just really cool to see that this is finally like you know happening. PVZ games on the Nintendo you know, consoles because that's honestly just not been too much of a thing. Back when the original Plants vs Zombies released, PopCop made a DS version, but that's basically like the only PVZ game on a Nintendo console. So it's, just, it's, it's cool to finally see this happening, and hopefully this means more PvZ games are on their way. Uh, all right, so this guy thinks we're uncool and won't let us into the club. We'll see about that. Um, oh, hey, buddy. <laughs> He's just following me around, I guess. 
but obviously this is like a perfect game for the Switch when it comes to PvZ games because it can be played online and offline. And there's a full story mode which makes things uh, much more capable with that. Like God of War 2 had some offline content, but it definitely wasn't to like the same degree as this game has it. Or it's like a fully explorable story mode. Okay, come on, let's get rid of you. And then we gotta get the lawnmower. Do I just, I gotta escort you. Okay, I remember. It's been a while, it's been like a year or two, right? This game came out in 2019. Man, yeah, it's been like a year and a half. That's crazy. Of course, you know, you guys gave me plenty of support throughout the Battle for Naperville series. It's one of our most popular um, series in general, and definitely one of our most popular uh, Plants vs. Zombies series. We've played all sorts of PvZ. You know, the original, we played uh, Plants vs. Zombies 2, the alpha of Plants vs. Zombies 3 before they took that down, Red Warfare 1, 2, and Battle for Neighborville, and PvZ Heroes, we, we've played them all. I do want to do a series at some point on the, the DS version I've been mentioning, because it's so different. I would love to check that out. Either way, let's focus on what we're currently doing. We gotta destroy all these guys. That did not get them. Okay, you know what? We're bringing out the big guns. There you go. My aim is a little not so good. I am playing on the Switch Pro Controller. I can imagine this might be a little bit more difficult on Joy-Cons, but that's where it would be cool if this game had gyroscopic aiming or something, you know, like Splatoon does, take advantage of the motion controls that are capable on the Switch. Uh, but I don't think it has that. I haven't seen any option for it. I'll have to double check. Um, guess we could poke into it right now while this lawnmower is moving around. Uh, motion controls. On, aiming only, looking only. Hmm, let's try it. Whoa, here we are! That's so cool, it does have gyroscopic aiming. That's a really cool addition. So this is, an, I don't think this is in the console versions. So like, I'm aiming with the analog stick, but I get some little bit of help by aiming with my controller as well, just like in Splatoon. And I'm sure that you could customize this so it's exactly what you prefer. That might take some time and more tweaking than I want to do in this one little video on this game. But that's really cool to have that option. And I think it works well, especially for Joy-Cons. There you go. Gotcha. Oh no, oh no. There you go, not too bad. Dude, this game has a lot of fun playable classes that adds a couple since Garden Warfare 2. The big difference with this game between this and the Garden Warfare series is why it's not Garden Warfare 3, is that this game doesn't have variants in the same way. Instead, it just has the set of base classes that you can customize with upgrades. And there we go, we got the uh, the Boogie Beatdown quest complete. I think that's all we gotta do to uh, be done with like the introduction of story mode. We can go online now back at the main area. But hey, we get level three with Pea Shooter. It's just 100 co or 1,000 coins, pretty cool. Yep, there we go. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna return to Giddy Park now. Yep, sounds good. And for that, we have to go online, but there are ways to do it in offline mode, I suppose. So here we are back at Giddy Park. As you can see, there's the multiplayer portal. And for whatever reason, Giddy Park definitely seems to chug a little bit. I mean, it's a pretty big area, so I guess it sort of makes sense, but. It's smaller than the story mode areas. That's where it's a little weird. But I guess that's where maybe it's a bit more active as well. There's a lot more too, it can be a bit overwhelming. Tell me about it. But as you can see, there's like lots of things to do and there's like little tutorial things so you can find these stuffies and they'll sort of teach you about the area. I'm not super interested in that in the moment. I just sort of like wanna run around. First, I wanna poke around Giddy Park a bit. I wanna switch over to the zombies or something so that we can, you know, just play as different characters. You know what? This time around, we'll play as a, uh, well, let's uh, switch sides if I can. There we go. We'll play as 80's action hero. He was one of the new characters added um, through this. Actually, you know what? Yeah, like also a space cadet, which is actually probably my favorite newly added zombie. You can see there's different zombies running around and stuff. I wanna go to Giddy Park or the center of it and sort of explore some stuff, but I do wanna see the prize map here. So this is sort of the main chunk of the content of the game is that each month there's a new prize booth prize map and basically you can earn up stuff and get through it more. Select prize map. Oh, interesting. This is different. Let me see how this works. That's so interesting. Okay, so usually this is restricted to months. So like the birthdays event is only in May, garden parties in June, summer nights is July, summer days is 
or maybe I'm getting it mixed up. I thought Call of Doom is Halloween themed, obviously. Like, usually you can only do those in their respective months, and there's, you know, a set of 12 of them. So for every month of the year, there's a new event. I guess you can choose to do any one of them at any time in this complete edition, which is really interesting. And basically, you just play the game, you earn levels, you earn experience, and that gets you prize bulbs, which are used to purchase these customizables. You'll get like different skins, different emotes, coins. You'll even get like legendary skins and stuff. And sometimes you even unlock classes. Um, we'll see. I think Luck of the Zombie was one of them. You unlocked the Wizard Zombie uh, right over this way. Now, you can also, I think, for these classes, just earn up typical coins, uh, and you can unlock them that way, but this is sort of the original way to do it, is going through the prize map. You would unlock the wizard. Um, See, so yeah, that's really cool that they've sort of changed it up in that way. Oh, and this is like an actual real other player. How cool is that? Hey, buddy. <laughs> yeah, like you'll just see other players running around. I guess there's not too many right now. The game just came out earlier today. Um, but we're just gonna go over here. This guy's just following me around. This lady wants to tell me about, you know, Giddy Park. But this is Giddy Park. This is sort of like a free romping ground area. How cool is that? Um, and like usually there's like other zombies and plants running around just battling each other. Little events can happen here. There's also some hidden stuff around here you can find. Uh, my interest is sort of the performance. I haven't actually seen any, oh gosh, any plants to fight. Usually they're plopping in here and there. Oh, there was a zombie. There's another zombie. Hello. <laughs> but where where are the plants? <laughs> What's well, a zombie without a plant, right? Uh. Huh. They're like nowhere to be seen. Usually they're just flying in. Weird. Um, maybe it's because I'm still like in a tutorial sort of section. Um, but you can see like here's a whole list of players that are just hanging out here. Um, it seems like like it's weird. Oh, no, no, okay. I thought I was saying that we're all Grandmaster rank. Uh, <laughs> that's not true. Uh, I'm definitely not Grandmaster rank. I installed the game 20 minutes ago. Let's respawn and go back to the plants, and we're just gonna go online. But you can sort of see how that works now. I think it's really cool that they've sort of changed it so that you still have to manually go through and unlock all the missions yourself. But it is a little, or all the customizables, it is a little more open. You don't have to wait around all year for one of the events to come back, and that's pretty cool. I think a lot of people may have misread it to think that they were gonna get everything for free if you got the Switch version, which isn't the case. You also have Rux's Emporium, where new stuff will show up every once in a while. Um, I think like once every once in a while, there'll just be a yeah, new stuff to buy. Um, this is where this is different though, and I think maybe this is what people were talking about a little bit more, is that in the other console and PC versions, most of these have a premium currency cost. You have to buy that currency, and then you can buy these things with that currency. Um, here, it's all costing just coins. Uh, so that's the main key difference. So I guess th this game is the more fiscally responsible choice. You'd actually be able to unlock everything yourself without having to buy it through in-game currency. I can definitely see how that might be a little bit more upsetting to players that have you know, been playing the game since the beginning. We're just gonna go ahead and do some turf takeover. That's the main most popular game mode and see how it goes. Okay, so we'll do Colonel Corn, but this is one of the key elements of this game is that every class has its own upgrades and you can use these to have some decent changes to the character and how they play. Um, I'm not gonna look too much into what I'm doing here. I'm just clicking random ones to be honest with you. Uh, there we go. I'm sure it'll help in some way, right? Uh, but we're just gonna go into it and see uh, how this goes. I definitely noticed at times that visually there's like a lot of poppins from the distance. Everything sort of has like a little bit of a blurry feeling to it. So getting used to the motion controls though. It's a nice thing for like little adjustments. There needs to be a button to like reset it though. I don't believe, like is there a button to reset it? I'm not sure. Cause like that's something useful about Splatoon is like if it sort of gets off center, there's a button to press to sort of reset it. Uh, There we go. We got this guy off in the distance. Trying to hit him. Got him. Already got one vanquished and looking good. I'll launch some of those in. Nice, got another one. And I think that some of these might be computer, like that guy just said imp. Yeah, I think that some of these are computer opponents, which typically would happen in the game if there's like not enough people to play. But Chronic is pretty cool, one of my favorite plant classes. You can throw in your butter to make them take extra damage and then you can just sort of fire at them really fast. We have our, oh there's another vanquish. We're doing really good. Uh, we also have our Cobb Busters, whatever they're called. Oh no, which should send out an explosive shot, but I got taken out there. Not a big deal. We're still getting the objective done. And with like, you know, 
Turf Takeover. It's pretty cool. There's usually a pretty large map to move forward in, and we have different objectives like take the point or push the payload. What do you think you're doing? Leave my plant friends alone, please. There we go. So far, the aiming on the Pro Controller, not bad at all. I'm really enjoying it. And I think that if I were to take the time to get used to the gyro aiming, that would help out a lot too, making those little adjustments that way. All right, we're jumping over here. And this is actually one of the newer maps that was added to the game. They've already confirmed that they're not doing oh, any more updates, but it is still cool to see everything that was added to the original role use of the game. All of it since then is all sort of like in one big package here. Oh boy. Uh, come on, come on. Gotcha a little bit. Okay, I'm just gonna run this way. I'm trying to be difficult over there. Yeah, I would love to hear, do you plan on getting the Switch version of Plants vs. Zombies Battle for Neighborville? What are your thoughts on it? I know that there was a lot of community backlash because of how they're affecting the monetization. I mean, I see it both ways. I think it's really cool that we have a version where you can actually just earn everything up without having to pay anything more than what you paid to get the game. I think that is really appreciated uh, with how games can be sometimes. But I also see the frustration from some people who are who had already paid a lot of money in the original game to get these customizations, and now I can just sort of technically get them for free through effort, and there was no possible way to do that before. So I, I see both sides of the argument. And I guess it's just sort of up to you as an individual to decide what you're okay with. Okay then. Gotcha. He tried to go in there with the mech, didn't quite work out for him. Okay, got him a little bit there. I don't think I quite took him out. How's our score doing? What the nine vanquishes? Actually, look, looking like we're the top vanquisher right now. Very cool. Chrono Corn's a pretty strong character. Though. I'm not too surprised. Oh, hey there. Thank you. I'm on a times five vanquish trick right now. Yeah, we're doing really good. Whoa. Okay, I thought I saw somebody over there. Okay then, so we're running to the second last point. The cool thing about Turf Takeover is that the final point for the attackers is always really cool. There's some spectacle, special things with it. It's usually exclusive to that map. But this one, like, there's like a, you'll, you'll see, you'll see. We'll get there. We're not gonna let them beat, him, beat us here. Oh boy. Oh yeah, that was one of the upgrades for the scientist. So he already has the steam scientist unlocked. I wonder how long that took that guy to do that. Because that's one of the, uh, unlockables from the season events, because not only was there customizables and some of them different classes, there were also character upgrades that were very unique. And that was one of them. It turns the scientist's splash out into like a, uh... oh boy, here we go. Uh, turns into like the steam shot, where if you stand in the steam too long, it does a bunch of damage to you. It used to be very overpowered. It's a little bit uh, more tame now. I definitely think that handling the recoil is better with the motion controls, and that's a big thing. Just being able to slowly just like point the controller down as I'm shooting the opponent really makes it so that recoil is not as big of a deal. I definitely want to try to lower his health if possible. Ah, oh, I didn't quite reach him. Oh boy. Come on, get him, get him, get him. Alright, well, I got him a little bit. Hmm, whoa, all right, well, I probably shouldn't be pushing this far. I'm going a little bit past the point. I should help capture the point. I'm getting distracted with vanquishes. That can always be fun, but need to help the team. Need to be a team player, because they're on the point right now. Whoa, where are you? Here you are. I want to get you. No, I'm not. <laughs> My aim's falling apart here. I'll show that butter down at the least. If I'm gonna get taken out, might as well throw out all my utility. So they're putting up a big fight here. Now might be a good time to check out a different class. So uh, let's really quickly uh, change character. Let's move over to the Snapdragon. Now this is a character added with this game. Uh, he's a new class. But you can see that honestly, sure, it might not be as absolutely pretty as other versions of this game on the PC or on the consoles. Uh, but it performs just fine. I'm able to go in here, still get top back. Well, sure, I don't feel like I'm having much of an issue with that at all. So that's pretty cool to say. Oh no, this is a problem. 
Um, no, you don't, you know, I can do that slam move too, you know. Better be careful. All right, where are you? Where are you? Let's go ahead and fire the, the blazing fireball at him. It didn't quite work. All right, we'll set up our flame wall. Oh my, oh my, watch it. No, if you're gonna slam me, I'm gonna slam you right back. I missed. <laughs> come on, come on. Whoa, where are they? Lots of enemies over here. There was nobody to hit that with. There are definitely some times I can admit to that like there's moments of action where it does get a little bit difficult to parse what's going on. Okay, I might get taken out here. This is where some flowers on our team could be very useful. I don't know if we have any at the moment to heal us up and stuff. Okay, let's try to go back in. We got two minutes to take this point. I hope we can get to it. If not, that'd be a bit of a shame, but it's okay. Yeah, like I said before, I have uh, played this game a bunch. <laughs> I've done basically everything I wanted to do in it. I mean, I, there's always more to do in it. Of course, there's still more classes to master, more customizations to unlock. But I think I've had my fill of it for now. We've played over 250 episodes of it. We got every single customization in all of the seasonal events, and I showcased all the major parts of that. Okay, that was not good. They're sort of starting to bounce back in a major way here. I don't know if we're gonna be able to get them. I'll certainly try that. Okay, let's get back into it. I gotta run over there real fast. Okay, uh. Yeah, it's probably gonna run right into the wall. I'm never good with that move, unfortunately. Launch it over that way, whoa. Let's fire that at him a little bit. Got him, nice. They're still contesting this point path. They just never stop. Oh no, ooh, I got him with that one. I thought I was just gonna be slammed by him there. Not quite the case. Okay. Got him too. Now we're starting to take this point again. We just all gotta stay on this point. Should be able to get it, no problem. Whoa, parrot. There's two parrots. No. That's <laughs> too, too many. Oh, there's a nymph coming in. He's mad. Oh, did that slam get him? I'm not sure. Let's set up the firewall. That should help a little bit, right? Uh, maybe not. I have low battery, but my controller's plugged in. I don't know what's up about that. I'll have to figure that out later. But definitely, I think that if you are a new player and you've been wanting to get into battle for Neighborville, from what I've seen so far, this isn't a bad place to start. I think that because you sort of get a better deal in terms of the potential unlockable stuff, even if it might not look as good in some ways visually, I think it's a totally fair trade for what you're getting in terms of value. Because it's a, it's a fun game, there's lots to do, online and offline, lots to unlock, even more now that you know some of it isn't Hang on. There we go. We can get this. It's in overtime right now. I'm trying my best here. There's a, there's a lot going on. I'm gonna throw that fire. Just gotta make it an unpleasant experience for them to take the point, and we'll be able to take it. Awesome. Can I get this guy? He's trying to run away. There we go. I hear somebody shooting something at me. Or level six with Snapdragon already. This guy's such a powerful character. <laughs> they finally got me, but that's fine. Yeah, we're doing really good. Over 30 vanquishes right now. Okay, let's keep moving. But yeah, I guess I can really quickly, before this round's over, maybe I can just showcase, actually, I wanna win this. We'll showcase a bit of customizations. We'll see what we end up having. Another parrot, which means that there's a Captain Deadbeard hanging out around here somewhere. I'm not too worried about it. We're just gonna keep moving. Let's go down here. And we can also spawn in little guys that the attacker team can. And they can help uh, push the attack onwards. But I think we'll be doing most of it ourselves. Hmm. Yeah, I'm seeing uh, no zombies around. 
oddly enough. Aha, here we go. Snuck in through the back lines. I can take out a couple of them. Throw out the flames like that. They're trying to push it one way, we're trying to push it the other. Uh, this is a problem. Uh, oh, boom, destroy the mech, destroy the mech. Ah, uh, not quite. <laughs> so maybe not the best way to do that. At least not on my loan, something like that. I think we need more backup from the rest of our team. I think we could just go in the normal way and probably take out a couple of people. All right. Uh, where is he? There he is. I'm gonna so just shoot one of these at him. That should actually help a lot. There we go. Stop the slower, and he's gonna explode his mech. Come on, come on, we can get him. I'm reloading him, overheated. I don't know where he went. The rest of our team is pushing the, the it's basically like a payload. Oh no, oh no, he's back for more. He was there the whole time. <laughs> How embarrassing. Yikes. I thought he had ran off by now, but now he got me. Good move by him. Okay, so it looks like the enemy team is pushing back with that a bit more. We do not want that, so let's spawn in some more offense. So there's a big storm overhead. But I know that um, they've talked a lot about it, that this game took a lot of work to port because they had to not only port the game, but the entire game engine to the Switch or something like that. I'm not really too familiar with game development, so don't call me exactly. It was just a really tough thing for them to do. So definitely, I appreciate the effort. I, I see how much work this must have taken. Ah, oh, darn. Okay, well that, that, that fireball might get somebody. It's, it's going right for something. This is quickly getting more difficult. I might want to switch over to somebody with a little bit more range. Oh, I'm being respawned now. Thank you, Citron, I appreciate it. Because with Snapdragon in this very open area, it's sort of hard to make the impact I need to make to win this. Especially with aiming like that, what am I doing? Um, I need to wait a couple of seconds and then I can send in the fire. And that'll really help. There you go. I don't think that's gonna reach who I want it to reach, but we'll try. They're going through the fire though. That's silly of them. All right then, so we right there just we got a prize bowl by getting more experience filling up the meter. And we can use that in the prize map to unlock whatever we want. Oh my, come on. I just need decent aiming. <laughs> I don't have it. But our team is still pushing. We get the scores, everybody is you know, contributing. They're trying their best. Let's change character real fast. Who can I switch to? Maybe, you know, one of my favorite classes in Garden War for one. And definitely one of my more favorite ones in this game, too. Uh, the cactus. Who can we snipe? And this is where gyroscopic aiming gets interesting. I feel like there's also like a weird aim assist going on. Gotcha. All right, we're having a hard time pushing this right now, though. And we are on the clock, unlike the zombies. The zombies can sort of just like sit and defend as much as they want. We need to actually push this to the end, I think. Okay, maybe, maybe not the best for this specific situation if my aiming is not so good. All right, doesn't seem to quite notice me though. There we go, gotcha. And it also has a short range shot, so we gotta use that here. Um, hopefully you are silly. And you don't look at me at all. Gotcha. All right, might as well work on that guy because it's a big target. Plants are pushing it again. This is a really big back and forth right now. Gotcha, that was a good shot. Happy I got that one. Uh, whoa, whoa. Oh, no, that was another good one. Felt a little weird with that shot, but it works, it works, right? Okay, that space cadet sound. Captain Nedbeard's running in. Hit him with sniper shot. Give him a taste of his own medicine, right? The Ems can be very hard to snipe, though, because of how small they are. I'm waiting for the smoke to clear. Start hitting the simp a little bit. Oh, come on, come on. We've gotten it so close. But then they're back on top of it again. There we go. Got it. Oh, what is this imp doing, huh? What is this imp doing? Ow, ow, ow. I got hurt pretty bad there. Yeah, I'm being a little bit too aggressive there. I'm trying to find, like, what's the best character for this situation? I wanted to. Oh, boy. I think we might run out of time here though, unfortunately. It's fine. Uh, Maybe back to Peace Shooter. Uh oh, hold on tight, think of the fun. 
But think of it like a fun, unsettlingly built ride. Okay, so it looks like the zombies did win, but at least we got to the last point. It was a ton of fun. I believe we also got top vanquishers, so lots of cool things there. Uh, but yeah, and with the end, if you get to the final round in Turf Takeover, there's usually a pretty cool cutscene. But you can tell the cutscenes have been a little bit tamed down, but they're still, they're still here. They still look cool. Uh oh, this poor guy in the outhouse. See ya. Oh no. <laughs> He's not in Neighborville anymore. Ah! Oh, right into Zomboss. Or not, actually, he's flying away now. <laughs> the poor guy. All right then, so yeah, we're gonna head back to Giddy Park now. So there was our look at Plants vs. Zombies Battle for Neighborville on the Nintendo Switch. There's obviously so much to get into that it would take forever, but if you want a more in-depth look on the intricacies of the game, like I said before, check out my full PvZ Battle for Neighborville series. We do everything. We do a bunch of stuff. It's a lot of fun. But uh, let's go ahead and respawn now. I wanna go ahead and take a look at some of the customizations. I don't know like what we really have, if anything. Um, it's not really looking like it. That's something I'm a little confused. Like I knew that there was like some, wasn't there like Christmas customizations and stuff that you could get with certain upgrades? I'm wondering if they're a part of this. It's actually looking like they're not. Interesting, maybe there's something you can get through rocks now. But how many coins do we earn up in today's video? I'm curious. Uh, 34,000, so not too bad. And you can have a maximum of 999 prize bulbs now. It used to be just 99. So that's pretty cool. But it looks like there's like no in-game monetization at all. Uh, it's just you buy the game and that's it. So it's like March, obviously look at the zombie is supposed to be the current thing. I could go ahead and just use my prize bulb and unlock something in here. Obviously it'd take a lot more playing and unlocking to get everything, but that's where it's pretty cool that there's just so much you can do in that. Um, but out over here, I don't know if there's anything too much interesting we can afford. We have 34,000 coins. Uh, there's like stuff like legendary hats that usually have a custom animation when you get a vanquish. Uh, I think we'll keep with this cool toaster hat for 30,000 coins to Toastman 5,000. I'll take it. And there we have it, Toastman 5,000. Okay then, so yeah, there's our look of this game on the Switch. I hope you guys enjoyed it, but for right now, but for right now, that is gonna wrap it up for today's episode of Zebra's Arcade. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.